What kind of songs do I sing? Um, they're usually based pretty much on the tonality of the situation and getting and finding a tone that I can ride out of the situation. So, and they're synesthetic. I mean, um, a tone like. You know, you're feeling it's doing something to you. And you can steer your way through weird stuff with this. Then, usually, you become distracted and uh, by the act of making the sound itself. Because the sound, first of all, you either have or have the illusion that you have tremendous control over the production of tone. Your ear it gives you a tremendous ability to differentiate these tones. And they're appearing in front of you as colors if you're loaded enough. So you, this is the modality in which you can experiment with the visible language. You try to syntactically construct out of tonality and glossolalia some kind of convincing uh, modality. Most of you have probably heard ayahuasca songs. I mean, Wane, wane, wane te Sinji te Sinji, sinji, sinji te They're driving is what they are. They're repetitious and they're driving. And you discover in yourself, you know, the capacity for glossolalia, which you can ride. You can lift the meaning governor off of the language machinery and just let it spin. And uh, uh, it, it's indefensible as art, but ecstatic to do, you know. I mean, I tend to do glossolalias, which are more conversational. And I like them because they play with meaning. So that kind of stuff sort of sounds like... Yeah, I do this alone in the dark. And what it is, is it's, it, it, it places an edge for the light to follow. And you discover um, um, meaning in the absence of context. And you discover like the source of meaning before it is contextually located. Don't ask me what this kind of, these kinds of words mean. This is what I, how I learned to talk hanging out with these semiotics people. Uh, but it's something like that, you know. And I think people did this for hundreds of thousands of years for each other as a form of performance art long before somebody got the nuts and bolts notion that you could connect an, an action in the world or a linguistic intent to a sound that we just set up for this, these small mouth noises, and it's tremendously uh, under the influence of, of psychedelics, you know, you can make language get up and walk around. I mean, you can literally peel it off the ceiling and set it dancing in your presence. Uh, if any of you have read um, Robert Graves' book, The White Goddess, he talks in there about what he calls an Ursprach, a visibly beheld language of primal poetry. And he thinks our anxiety has to do with the fact that we have lost the true speech. And that if you speak the true language, the Ursprach, it's a beheld language. It doesn't require the conventionalization of dictionaries. You know what you mean. And that the, the loss of this genetic language has, is what made us so maladaptive and at unease with ourselves.